رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر امين يا رب العالمين الله عز وجل describes a scenario and comments on a scenario that the Prophet ﷺ was going through. And I want to summarize just some highlights of what the Prophet was going through at this time ﷺ. When our Messenger was delivering Islam in the, in the place of, in the city of Mecca, early on he was met with ridicule. But later on, it wasn't just ridicule. He was constantly being criticized. He wasn't just being dismissed. Now he was also being attacked. Anybody who believed in him was also being socially isolated, boycotted, made fun of, physically beat up at times, insulted and humiliated. And the people who were doing that were some of the most powerful and influential people in Mecca. So it's not like everybody's doing it, but the people that are doing it are very, very powerful. So you, the normal people, the average people of Mecca, even if they don't like it, they can't say anything because they don't want to mess with influential people, you see. Because the bullies in this situation were actually pretty powerful and pretty influential. They had servants, they had entire clans under them, they had a lot of money behind them. And on the other hand is the Prophet ﷺ who has none of those things. He doesn't have a, a huge amount of influence, he doesn't have money, he doesn't have resources. And he's the one being degraded and humiliated all the time. And in such a scenario, you don't want to, you feel unprotected. If you side with someone who doesn't have any backing, you know, the tribal wars were all about who's got a stronger back, right? And you want to be associated with people that have more protection. And so the people that were in leadership in Quraysh had more protection. And so, you, you know, you don't want to mess with them. And clearly you don't want to side with the Prophet ﷺ. Even people that were thinking about accepting the call of Islam had to think twice because it's not just I accept these ideas. If I accept this, I'm going to be thrown under the bus like them and I'll have no protection. And even if I have protection now, if I have my family that respects me and will take care of me and will spend on me now, if I accept Islam, I'll lose all of that. I'm going to lose that protection also. So actually being Islam was associated with being without any protection, being open to attack. And in response to all of that, Allah revealed in Surah Al-A'raf this remarkable ayah. He says to have the Prophet ﷺ declare, Inna waliyi Allah. No doubt about it, my protective friend who is always by my side is Allah. That's, I don't need your protection. I don't need any other manpower next to me. I don't need people next to me. I don't need money next to me. The word wali in Arabic, which I'm translating here as protective friend, I added in the translation next to me. Because wali comes from the, the verb wala or waliya yali, which means to be next to something. And from it you also get the word thali. You know, the one that, that's right after something. The idea that Allah is never absent, is always next to me, and is constantly there next to me. It's an ism sifa wali. It's on fa'il. My constant companion and protector is in fact Allah. Now, I wanted to highlight that because we may not be in Makkah, and we may not be attacked by the Quraysh, but there are times in your life and mine where you feel that you're being attacked by other people. And you feel that those that may be attacking you or those that may be insulting you or those that may be a threat to you have a lot more influence than you do, have a lot more power than you do, have a lot more reach than you do. And you feel unprotected. And it is in times like that, <coughs> Allah reminds you and me first and foremost that my wali is Allah. But it's not just about people attacking. What I wanted to highlight is a phenomenon in, in Muslim culture that's actually a really... Uh, it, it's, it's a threat to our faith. It's a threat to our relationship with Allah Himself. One of the most fundamental components of my relationship and your relationship with Allah is that He is our protector. That He, he protects us. Nothing else, no one else can protect us when Allah protects us. And nothing else can save us when Allah wants some harm coming our way. You know? When Allah Azza wa Jal wants good for someone, no one can stop it. And when He wants that something should be afflicting you, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا We say to, we declare, nothing will strike us except for what Allah has decreed or written for us. And it's interesting in that ayah, we didn't even say what He has written against us. We said what He has written for us. 
In other words, even a bad experience is going to have some good in it, whether we get it or not. But we're going to attribute good to Allah. إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا He's the one that's protecting us, guarding us, securing us. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And Allah alone, believers should be placing their trust. So what is this threat that I'm talking about that can undercut our entire faith? What happens a lot of times in other religions, let's not talk about Islam for a second. In other religions, when somebody gets into trouble, they grab on an amulet. They grab on a crucifix or they grab on a, a, you know, some kind of a, a charm, some kind of a thing. And they say, well, this thing protects me. This ring that I'm wearing protects me. This, this, this band that I have around my wrist, it protects me. This locket that I have protects me. Or this, this book that I've put in my dashboard protects me. You understand? Or if I go and I do I sprinkle this kind of water on myself, that special water is going to protect me. There's physical things in other religions, physical things that people start attributing, they have supernatural protective powers. And if I have those things, then I'll be protected somehow. Now some of that made its way into even Muslim thinking. That we started believing in objects that have special powers. Which is why you find people go to Umrah and they go to Hajj and they, they sneak in a pair of scissors. And when they get to the Kaaba, they'll cut out a little bit of the cloth and bring it home. And every time they get, you know, sinus infection, you know, rub it on their forehead because it's going to get rid of all their problems. Now they're believing that because this cloth was touching the Kaaba, that somehow this cloth has supernatural powers and it's going to heal them. The thing is, now you're looking at protection from things. And you're starting to lose your connection from the idea that Allah Himself is the one who protects. And sometimes this, this idea, instead of bringing, and people do this thinking that they're doing something religious, but actually this is taking you away from the religion. This is taking you away from inna waliyi Allah. My only protector, the one next to me, is in fact Allah. Then a lot of times people start believing in you know, harm that can come to them from the unseen and there's an obsessive, compulsive tendency among many Muslims, sometimes educated Muslims, well-learned Muslims, to believe if something is wrong with me, if I lost my job, if I'm going through depression, if I'm having trouble in my marriage, if I'm having, if I got diagnosed with a disease, if this happened, this problem happened, that problem, somebody did magic to me. I need to find out who did magic to me. And if, the, if they did magic, I need to find, if they did some spell, I need to go to someone who's going to find me the, you know, the prescription to undo that spell. And this happens in other religions all the time. But this kind of ignorant thinking has made its way into our religion, where people have started believing that they can go to certain people who will make them prescriptions, literally, hey, I'm going to write this word on this piece of paper, you fold it up, and you swallow it, don't ask questions, or dip it into your orange juice and then drink it, let the ink go in, and then drink it, and that's it, you will find your lost motorcycle. It's gonna come back to you, it's gonna drive on its own, it's gonna be on your you know, driveway before you know it. My problems are going to be solved. Somebody, did, somebody magically stole my motorcycle, and it's magically going to come back, because I'm following this, this prescription. And what's even crazier, is a lot of times the people who make these kinds of prescriptions, they'll put ayat of the Qur'an, Words from Allah's words. And so the, 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 the one who doesn't understand the purpose of the Qur'an thinks, well, it has Qur'an on it, it must have special powers. It has Allah's name on it, so this must be a good thing. Let me put this, and I've seen this in many people's homes, what, what we do is um, to protect the house or something, on the fridge, you'll have like a piece of paper, it has Alif Lam Mim, Ha Mim, Yasin, Taha, you know, the names of surahs that begin with the letters, there's a little, you know, a, a chart with all those letters. And what's that there for? So the bananas don't expire quickly, right? So that the food will stay. This, this is going to make sure that the, this is preservative for your foods or protection for your house. Who, who came up with this? Let's take a step back for a moment. And by the way, the counter argument when you question something like that, for your, and I'm not saying you go and start these fights at home. That's not what I'm saying. I want you to understand why this is, a, this is problematic, not because it's ignorant or evil or wrong. I'm saying why, this is, why is this problematic? It's taking you away from Allah. <coughs> You're not realizing it's taking you away from Allah. That's the biggest harm. That's the biggest harm of all. The thing is, when you start believing in these kinds of prescriptions, 
there's a really deep problem in the way you think about your faith and the way you think and I think about Allah. You see, Allah told us, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُطْلِعَكُمْ عَلَى الْغَيْبِ Listen to this carefully now. Allah will never tell you what's happening in the unseen. The world of the unseen. What are angels writing right now over here and over here? How many angels are in the presence of our audience right now? I don't know. When is judgment day coming? I don't know. Where are the jinn and what are they doing? I don't know. Allah did not give us access to the unseen. He didn't. He gave that access in a limited way in what He wanted to His messengers والسلام, So they would speak on behalf of the unseen. The messenger of Allah وسلم, would sometimes be able to see Angel Jibreel in the sky. Everybody else around him is looking at the same sky, they see nothing. But he can see Angel Jibreel because Allah has opened or removed the veil from his eyes so he can see the unseen. Now again, that's the first point I made, that's not my point. My point is building up. The second point I want to make, if you have a bacterial infection, if you have a sinus problem, if you have a stomach issue, if you have a medical issue, and you go to the doctor, and they do a checkup, and they do an x-ray, right? Or they take your temperature. That's not the unseen. They could see the temperature is high. They can see the bacterial infection. They can see things on the CAT scan or the MRI. They can see it. And when, because they can see it, they can try to give you a diagnosis and a prescription. So here's how you take care of this. This was not a matter of the unseen, this was a matter of the seen. But when you go to somebody and say, hey, I'm having a lot of trouble in you know, my marriage, or I'm having a lot of trouble with anxiety, I'm having trouble sleeping, or I can't concentrate in my prayer, and they say to you, hold on a second, let me, let me, let me access the unseen. And according to the unseen, if you read this 37 times and then do the hokey pokey and turn around in 360 degrees a few times, then sit on this couch and then on that couch, and then jump up and down and do this for 45 days, then you'll be fine. Or some lady goes to some, the people go to these places, I can't have children. Or I only want sons, another kind of ignorance. I only want sons. How can I make sure I have sons? Okay, I'm going to write something down on this. And he literally, he could be writing the alphabet. It could be whatever it may be. And he'll fold it up and put it on your arm. Don't take it off. If you take it off, you won't have a baby. And once you have a baby, never take it off. The moment you take it off, baby's going to die. And you have women whose sons are 30 years old and they're wearing this thing. Muslim. Believing this is somehow protecting their child. Believing these anecdotes are protecting our kids. The, or, or protecting us in some way. And also for you to believe, you know, when people have arguments in their homes... This is the most incredible kinds of ignorance that you... I, I don't imagine even the people of shirk in Mecca were this ignorant. And sometimes the kinds of ignorance you hear from Muslims. From Muslims that are supposed to be knowledgeable in their deen, knowledgeable in the word of Allah. They'll say things like, you know, my son or my daughter or my whoever, they're not responding to me. Some, their wife must have done magic on them. She's putting magic in their food. And now they've changed. It may have nothing to do with the fact that you were abusive. It may have nothing to do with the fact that you insulted someone. It must be magic. And now all of a sudden, your son-in-law, your daughter-in-law, your nephew, or your niece, they're sorcerers. They're like the Sahara of Pharaoh's time. And you got to stay away from them. If they, if they give you food, it might be poisoned. They may have blown something on it. And then when you eat that food, that's it. You're going to get cancer. This belief that somehow someone else other than you, a human being, has access to the unseen and can cause you harm, they can cause you harm, is you contradicting the fundamental belief that your protector is Allah. And no one can harm you unless Allah wills that to, to be the case. And let's even for a moment, even though my khutbah is not about magic, but let's talk about that for just a second. The Arabic word sihr, actually has to do with manipulating someone's thoughts. It has nothing to do with someone hovering in the air. It has nothing to do with causing you cancer. Somebody did magic, that's why a truck ran into me. No. No, 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 no. Magic has... يُخَيَّلُ أَنَّهَا تَسْعَى Even Quran says it. Quran says when the magicians did magic against Musa alayhi salam, it was made to appear to people. Their thoughts were manipulated. The idea of magic is to actually influence somebody's thoughts. And there is no greater protection for the thought 
of a human being than the word of Allah. Which is why the word of Allah did not come to be memorized, even though we memorize it. The word of Allah did not come, so you take one word from it and you read it a thousand times. That's not why the word of Allah came. Allah did not say, أَفَلَا تَحْفَظُونَ أَفَلَا تُرَاجِعُونَ He said, أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Why don't you think? Why don't, you, don't, you, don't you then think? Don't you then think? The word of Allah came so we can think about the word of Allah. But you know what we've, we've done? We've committed this crime. Like other religions may do this with anecdotes and other kinds of trinkets and things. We've done this with Quran and we've turned the Quran into something we don't think about. We use it for everything else. Take an ayah, fold it up, swallow it, put it around your neck, put it on your arm, do this or that, have an Allah chain. I've got, you know, you, got, you, know, you have uh, Christians, you know, young gang members, who go rob a bank, but they're wearing a crucifix. They're like, Jesus is going to protect me. I'll be all right. And they kiss it before they go into the bank. And you got Muslim gangsters wearing Allah chains. You know? Or Ayatul Kursi hanging from the dash, you know, the rear view mirror. Because you don't have dual side airbags. You know? Or you've got a copy of the Quran, mini print copy of the Quran. You need a microscope to read this thing. You'll never read it. But is there why? Because, you know, I cut a lot of red lights. So I need a, I need a mushaf. <laughs> this, is, this is what we've turned the Qur'an into. This is an insult to the word of Allah. The word of Allah came, so we find protection in it. Now listen to this ayah, this, this ayah that I started with. My protector is Allah. What's the rest of this ayah? And this was for the Prophet ﷺ. Somebody could say, well, Allah clearly protected his Prophet, but I need some special kind of protection. Where am I going to get protection? He says, الَّذِي نَزَّلَ الْكِتَابِ Allah who sent the book down. Allah who sent the book down. What did he connect with his protection? His book. He was even more open in Surah Al-Kahf. He said, وَلَن تَجِدَ مِن دُونِهِ مُلْتَحَدًا You will not find any secure refuge other than Qur'an. When someone's in trouble, they should be running to Allah's book and thinking about what Allah says. Not running to Allah's book and putting it in a shelf somewhere or mindlessly reciting it, thinking that that's the solution. Or taking beginnings of surahs and making grids on their fridge. Or, or, you know, coming up with these crazy prescriptions that somebody claims they know how to... If, if this was actually a prescription that solved your problems, the one who would know it would be the Messenger of Allah wasallam, Because Allah informs him of, of solutions. If our Messenger did not give those prescriptions, and then somebody people are like, well, you know, he did tell us to say, SubhanAllah 33 times, Alhamdulillah 33 times. See, he gave us numbers, so we can come up with our own numbers. No. He can because Allah inspires him. Who inspired you? Where did you get these numbers from? Read this 50 times, read that 75 times, do this 20 times. Where did you come up with these prescriptions? And you know the last part of this ayah. That's the beauty of this ayah. It started with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Inna wali Allah alladhi nazzala al-kitab. He didn't even say nazzala alayya al-kitab. Nazzala ilayya al-kitab. Who sent the book to me? He said he sent the book. He didn't reduce it to who? Himself. Which means Allah protects me, but the book is for all. And then he ends the ayah, وَهُوَ يَتَوَلَّ الصَّالِحِينَ And he in fact is the one who continues to offer protection to good people. All Allah is asking for your, you want special protection from Allah? You want us, your, all your problems to be dealt with and Allah never to abandon your side? Then all you need to do, all you need to do is hold on to, to Allah's book and don't do messed up things. Don't backbite. Don't slander, don't cheat, don't lie, don't hurt people, don't do haram things. Get away from what you know to be evil. You get away from evil stuff and you stay straight, Allah protects. The secret ingredient is not some special potion. The secret ingredient is not some special kind of dhikr that will protect you. You live a good life and protection comes from Allah. You get away from evil deeds and protection comes from Allah. You learn from, think about what Allah is saying and live by what Allah is saying. He's not asking for much. He's not asking for much. You become a thoughtful, grateful, you know, conscious believer and protection comes from Allah. You would think He protects people that do some special things. No, they just have to be good. That's all they have to be. And Allah's protection comes. You see, the religion of Allah is easy. And, he, and you will know that, that the religion of Allah is clear and it's easy and it's beautiful if you actually let Him teach it to you in His own words. That's the Qur'an. But when you go to people, people will make the religion hard, number one. And number two, they'll try to take advantage of you. 
make money off of you. Tell you that you have to go to them to solve your problems and they have a connection to Allah. They'll find out from the unseen what you need to do. Now your connection is not with Allah. Now your connection is with a piece of paper or with an amulet or with something hanging in your mirror. Your, your, your connection is with these things, not with Allah anymore. Have your bond, your wilaya with Allah Azza wa Jal and protection will come. And for those that ignorantly argue or attribute every problem they have to this one must be a magician, that one must have done some kind of magic, this one is calling jinns against me, this one's call... Stop that ignorance. This ignorance only happens, this kind of thing only happens because you don't think. And you don't think because you're not using Allah's book to think. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ May Allah Azza wa Jal make us people that are thinkers the way He wants us to be. And may Allah Azza wa Jal protect us from ignorance. And may Allah Azza wa Jal protect us from saying these kinds of ignorant things about one another. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikri al-Hakim.